Hey guys, Josh here, and today I want to take a look at the Air Raider faction from the Hasbro 87 line, the Air Raiders. Now, I do have a complete collection of the Warriors and Wim, which I will show that in the next video, but in this video, I wanted to mainly focus on the Air Raiders themselves. Now, before we get into the vehicles that I actually own, I am missing two pieces. I'm missing the Man of War, so I won't be able to show you that, and it's the rarest piece of the Air Raider toy line. Uh, I've only seen it once on eBay, 100% complete, mint box, but unfortunately it was AFA graded, so they were asking like twelve dollars to $1,300 for it, and I'm just not willing to pay that amount of money for a toy line that wasn't really that successful in the, you know, for the most part. The other one being the Command Center. I have seen it mint in box between $40 and $80, definitely in the price range that I'm willing to pay, but unfortunately I was buying too many Transformers at the time to have that spare cash to buy some Air Raiders. Other than that, my collection is absolutely complete, except for mail away figures and prototypes that never were released. All right, now taking a look at some of the vehicles that I do own. This is the Thunder Hammer, which can pilot seven different guys. So as you can see, you have the two guys here at the front, two guys on a turn on each side. You also have turns down here. These rotate, these rotate as well. You also have four missiles at the bottom, two on each side. You also have missiles here on the side that can actually rotate on that little joint right there. Two guys back here that are just chilling. I don't know what they're doing. Then you have the main guy, so you can put like your little... Uh, captain or general or whatever you want to call them up there now this little thing does rotate a bit as you can see it's got a little gun right there which is nice and the little gimmick with this as you can see all these little hoses and I don't know if I haven't programmed correctly but um, it being so old doesn't really push the air through there so that's the only thing that's really negative with my particular vehicles uh, but you're basically supposed to pull this up all the way and when you came down with it if you had this little joint uh, let's see if I can show that to you a little bit better. Uh, going down here through the middle, it's supposed to shoot them both off, or you could turn it to the left and just shoot this one, or vice versa and do it that way. But not too bad. I wish there was a little bit more detail. Unfortunately, this line was not very successful. It only made one series, and like I said, the Man of War is the rarest and most expensive out of them. Now, there was going to be an air refinery for the Warriors of Wind, but that never made past prototype. And I have heard that there's like maybe one or two prototypes out there, which are extremely expensive for Air Raider fans. But unfortunately, uh, I've never been able to see it, and I haven't seen any pictures online either. Uh, not too bad a little vehicle. Their whole thing was, you know, they rode on wind. And basically, the Warriors of Wind, they stole the air or something like that. And these are the Rebels, kind of like in Star Wars, so everyone's ripping off Star Wars at this point. Uh, they wanted to try to capture it back so that they can have it for, you know, people of Airlandia is <laughs> a crazy little name for, uh, I guess the planet, but not too bad. And the commercials are really cool. Um, that's what really made me want to buy these. This was kind of competing with Coleco Starcom, which I will show those off, uh, maybe in the next few weeks and we'll take a look at some of the figures, but let's go ahead and take a look at the next vehicle. All right, now taking a look at the Air Raiders flying vehicle. This is Twin Lightning. Now, if it looks a little familiar, think Star Wars Empire Strikes Back, and the flying vehicle that basically guided the Millennium Falcon into the City of the Clouds looks exactly like that. But it's really hard to find an 80s toy property that didn't capitalize or rip off Star Wars in some way back then. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the toy itself. Uh, it does have a nice flight design, or you know, just being able to handle as a kid. It's lightweight, and also unlike Captain Power, you didn't have to have a handle or something like that to hold it. Uh, you just, you know, held it top and bottom just like so and you can see that you have the little air cushions on both sides and you also had your hand on the gimmick as well uh, to fire the gimmick you have this little thing here you could put it to the right side or the left side so we're gonna fire the right missile so there you go uh, it's not very powerful but again it is old I'm just like the fact that this one still does fire uh, you can put those back in there you also see that you came with two extra little missiles that you could hold down here you had these little turrets that would go up and down, and these in the back as well. As far as the bottom section here, you can see that you kind of got these like nice little skis that have some nice detail, but unfortunately they're not retractable. They just kind of stay there. So sometimes you'll find these broken off uh, because they are a little bit fragile right there. Now, the one negative gripe that I do have with this guy, well, it's kind of a positive at the same time. You're never going to find any of these, kind of like the G.I. Joe ones, where the canopy is fine, but the little clip to clip it onto the actual jet uh, is broken off. You're never going to have that with this because it doesn't have one of those. So versus this being found broken all the time, that's not the problem. The problem is finding it at all uh, because it's missing a lot of the times and sometimes it's a little bit difficult to find uh, just because it is held in with these two little 
pegs here and it fits in these two slots. But as you can see, this thing can hold four different guys. And I'm not sure if it came with any action figures, but um, very nice. You can usually pick them up in like little five packs back then. But there you go with the stickers and take a look at the bottom here. So nice little twin lightning figure there and we'll move on to the next now take a look at one of the smaller vehicles from the line this is the storm dagger i do have two but they only came one per box so we're just going to focus in on one vehicle itself one of the other things that it came with is this little uh air pressure thing right here which a lot of people they end up just putting a missile on here and using it as a cannon for you know whenever we played for it as kids uh but what you're supposed to be able to do is put this back here you push down on this and as you can see it doesn't work very good uh, just because it's old but that's what this was used for uh, but as far as the vehicle itself, it does roll really nice, so you can still get a lot of playability out of it, even if that little mechanism did not work. Uh, you do have a gun back here for this guy. can pilot two different guys here. You also have little missiles that slide out, and, you know, kind of like G.I. Joe. So these are missing every once in a while on some of these figures. Some people that had them back then didn't even know they slid out. So, uh, But one of the things that I would keep in mind if you do plan on buying one of these figures loose is this little section right here. Now you can move it this way, as you can see there, or you can move it this way. But whenever you do it, you wanna make sure that you do it both at the same time, just cause there's a very tiny piece of plastic that holds that section and a very tiny piece right there. And if you only move one, uh, kind of starts to put pressure on the other end. So that's you'll find a lot of these broken off or one end broken off. So that's something to keep in mind. But let's go ahead and move into the Which other is the Thunderclaw. So I do have two of these vehicles, but again, these came one per box. So we're just going to focus in on one of those. One of the other things that it came with, also this little pressurized thing, you could put it back here and it loaded right there. So you could press down on that and uh, it doesn't really go again. Now, one of the cool things about this is it does have another little gimmick. It does have little guns here to the side that you can rotate. You can just do one, they both do. So it's just a bar that goes all the way across. It does pilot two guys there. But there's also this little feature right here that you could open that. And they call it the Thunderclaw for a reason. Here you have one of the Warriors of Wind. It can come across here, bam, chop them up and, and use them as a battering ram and kill them. So uh, that's basically the Thunderclaw. So not too bad. Let's go ahead and take a look at some. Now of the take a look at the aerator figures themselves. I am missing two. One came with the command center, so whenever I get that, I'll have that figure. The other one being in a metal way that came with the Warriors of Wind metal way, which I've only seen on my eBay once, and for the pair of them, it was a thousand dollars, and I wasn't interested in paying that. But these are the three main ones that you'll see on eBay more than likely. The highest ranked guy being this one then this one, and this is kind of your troop builder guy. Basically because whenever you could buy them in package, whenever you know you had figures that came with the vehicles, but then you also had these guys in a five pack, so you had four of these, and like one of these or four of those, and you know one of those guys. But looking at some of the detail, let's focus in on one at a time. It's hard to see on these orange ones, but you can kind of see a little bit of detail there. And the head does rotate on this guy. His arms go up and down independently, but the legs kind of go in one motion. And there's that little crack right there that you'd put uh, to peg down on something to make him stand. But not too bad of a little figure there. Take a look at the next one. Uh, doesn't look too bad. As you can see, I mean, they're all different. So they didn't just use the same design and paint different things. So different heads, different arms, everything. So really nice job. And as you can see, this one's kind of a bent arm to where this one is more of a straight arm. So different sculpts all over. Very nice. The other one being uh, the little grunt guy. As you can see, this one's the one that you can show a little bit more detail. Just look at those arms. Uh, we'll focus in here a little bit better. We can. Yeah, so the amount of detail that went into these guys is very nice on the figures. Unfortunately, the paint applications just weren't as good as I would like. Uh, but the head does not rotate on this one, or I guess you could, but you can see that there's a little notch there that causes him from rotating. This guy's shoulders cause him from rotating. Uh, but then again, I mean, they can move here. They didn't come with any weapons, which was a little unfortunate, so Starcom had them beat there. Plus, Starcom had, you know, nice paint detail, articulation, and, you know, weapons, magnets, all that stuff. So there is basically the th three main Air Raider guys. All right, in closing, this is one of those toy lines from the 80s that I really enjoyed as a kid. And every time I went over to a friend's house, this is what I always wanted to play with because I love the idea of the two-inch figure guys, just kind of like Legos, but you don't have to build crap to play with them. But unfortunately, it wasn't very successful because it didn't have a cartoon backing, even though it was made by Hasbro. Uh, and it also was in a direct competition with Starcom, which... 
you know, had better articulated figures. They had magnets, you know, better paint jobs, gimmicks, everything. So much better toy line all the way across the board. But still, I do like these guys. And I will have the Warriors of Win video up uh, next. But I just wanted to kind of show you a group shot of the collection that I have. And thanks a lot for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed. And I'll talk to you later.